This publication comes from the Journal of Natural Products titled Synthesis and Biological Evaluation of Tryptamines Found in Hallucinogenic Mushrooms, Norbeocystin, Beocystin, Norcilocyon, and Aerogenicinin. Uh, I will not be talking about the synthesis of these compounds. I will just be talking about the biological activity measured. If you want to see the synthesis, I will leave a link for the paper. The following compounds studied were synthesized in the publication, but not all of them were run in bioassays. These were the compounds studied. The first compound, Norbeocystin, has the classic tryptamine backbone highlighted in purple and the phosphate group in blue that is seen in psilocybin. Then we have Beocystin, which has pretty much the same structure, only we've substituted one of the hydrogens for a methyl group. Then we have psilocybin, which is the active compound in psychedelic mushrooms. This has two methyl groups substituted for two hydrogens. Then we have aerogenesin, which has three methyl groups substituted for each of the hydrogens to give us the trimethyl substituted derivative. Then we have norcilocyan, which has the alcohol group which is what your body actually converts the phosphate group uh, to in order to make the compound psychoactive and cross the blood-brain barriers. So we have the alcohol group substitution with one methyl group substitution at the nitrogen position. Then we have psilocybin, of course, which is what psilocybin gets broken down into to make the compound cross the blood-brain barrier to make it a psychedelic compound. And as we can see, as we go from left to right, we have an increase in degree of methylation. The publication uh, only looked at the compounds Beocystin and norcilocyan in the bioassays for the reason that the, a lot of scientists believe that aerogenesin gets far too much broken down pharmacokinetically in your body and it can't before it gets to the blood-brain barrier. So they only study the two compounds, Beocystin, Norcilocyan, and they used, um, they used Silocin as a control. The first bioassay the publishers of the paper used is the head twitch response, which, I, which I've talked about a bunch before. It's the idea that you give a psychedelic drug to a mouse or a rat and it will twitch its head, and this amount of head twitching is correlated to drug binding to serotonin 2A receptor. So it's basically used to evaluate how strong of psychedelic um, the drug you're testing is at the receptor. So psilocybin is used as a control, and as we can see, as we go from 0 milligrams per kilogram to 0.3 milligrams per kilogram, we see an increase in the head twitch counts. Um, in 20 minutes. And then as we get to one milligram per kilogram, we see a statistically significant effect denoted by the star on top. And also at three milligrams per kilogram, we see a statistically significant effect, which is pretty normal. This is um, a well-documented protocol in the world of uh, psychedelics and mice, the head twitch response. If we compare that to Beocystin, What's interesting is we see an increase in concentration of Beocystin used, but we don't see any statistically significant effects. Thus, we could say that Beocystin does not induce psychedelic effects in vivo in animals. And the authors of the paper attributed this to the compounds likely being metabolized to inactive metabolites before they reach the uh, central nervous system or blood-brain barrier. Thus, they never actually even got to the, the brain, which is quite interesting. The authors of the paper then wanted to look at, are these drugs even active at serotonin receptors? And you can use the following bioassay to do this, which is known as GQ calcium flux, which basically just tells us how strongly is that receptor activated by the drug. And the cool part about this is because it's just drug and receptor, there is nothing to metabolize the drug, so we're discounting pharmacokinetics when we run this assay and just trying to say, does the drug bind to the receptor and activate it? This was first tested in the human serotonin 2A receptor. We can see 5-HT or serotonin is in black, 
and because this curve has a higher Emax or top, and the potent and the curve is shifted to the left, it has a higher potency and efficacy than norcilocyone and psilocybin. In this assay, we can see that norcilocybin has a higher Emax, so it has a stronger effect. You can turn on the receptor with this drug um, than uh, psilocin. We observe pretty much the same results at the mouse serotonin 2A receptor. The reason they use the mouse receptor is because they use these drugs in mice when they tested it at the head switch response in the previous slide. The only thing noticeable difference that I see is norcilocyone has the similar Emax as serotonin uh, in terms of activating the receptor in mice. Then we get to the actual numerical values where we can look at the EC50 of psilocin, norcilocyone, and 5-HT. If you look at the 2A receptor, we would see that um, the highest potency is exhibited by serotonin, and then between norcilocyone and uh, psilocin, um, psilocin actually has a greater potency than norcilocyone, although norcilocyone has a higher uh, Emax than psilocin. The summary of the paper is as follows. The results suggest that norcilocin activates human and mouse serotonin 2A receptor in vitro, as we saw in the GQ calcium flux bioassay. It does not show psychedelic effects in vivo. We saw this in the head switch response, because likely it is rendered into an inactive metabolite during metabolism. I did really like this paper. However, I just wish they tested the other compounds both in vivo and in vitro.